I'm going to talk about something today. Uh, it is a connection between ancient religion and astrology. It is the old idea that all of us have a special angel or spirit that um, perhaps has been granted to us by God. Uh, we have a special connection with this spirit. This angel or spirit somehow moves in us, maybe gives us ideas, um, and that this angel is also a special uh, way to connect with God and gain knowledge of who we are and who we ought to be and how we ought to live. Uh, one thing I will mention now, and we'll get back to it later, is there are many people on the planet. Do we all have our own individual angel? Or do many of us share, a share in one angel of different types? We'll look at that idea a little later on. But the idea is that we all have a special spirit or angel that uh, says something important about who we are. And in order to be happy, we need to do what we can to connect with this spirit or angel. Um, now, we've all heard the story of Adam and Eve in the garden. And in the old story from the Hebrew Bible, uh, uh, Adam and Eve, or at least Eve, wanted to be wise. And they ate of the apple and they gained knowledge and God got very angry and kicked them out of the garden. And so the idea here is that we were in a more beautiful, pure state, but now we live in a more difficult state full of pain and tears. Well, Plato, the Greek philosopher, had some similar stories, but he connected them with the idea of this personal angel. The first version of the story is in a, a work of his called the Phaedrus. And in it, Plato says that before we were born, our souls were up in the heavens. And just as the heavens turn around every day, so our souls follow a particular sign in the heavens, a particular God associated with the signs. And we, in a sense, love this God, and we want to be like this God. For example, maybe there is... One of the gods is a god of wisdom, and so we love wisdom. Or one of the gods is a more Venus-type god, um, and so we love certain things about that god. And before we are born, we can see the whole range of true reality. But, he says, as we're going along, our desires and our passions drag us down from the heavens onto earth. And although our soul struggles, uh, we are dragged down to earth, and that is where we are born. And when that happens, he says, we forget who we were. So that when we live our lives, as we all do, we are living in a state of ignorance and forgetfulness. And our job, really, to be happy is to understand who we are, where we came from, and what God or spirit we are supposed to follow. But you notice that the important thing for Plato is that we ought to have knowledge. In the Adam and Eve story, God doesn't want us to have knowledge. But in the, this astrological and religious story from Plato, we want to have knowledge of who we are and where we've come from. The second story comes from a, a work called the Timaeus, and this was Plato's work on the creation of the universe. And one of the main things that God tries to do in this story is to make the world intelligible. The world has to make sense. And so he introduces certain structures and patterns into the world, numbers and other things, values like good and truth and beauty. And he also does one more thing. He introduces the planets and planetary spirits. 
And he tells these planetary gods or spirits or angels to take care of people so that every human being will have a certain planetary spirit or god or angel that has a special, uh, has a special guiding role over us. And one of the reasons to do that is because if we know who that angel is, we can help know what our place in the universe is, and we will no longer live in a state of forgetfulness. So we are supposed to become conscious, and uh, the question is, how do we become conscious? Well, in the Phaedrus, Plato says that sometimes we find out who we really are when we fall in love. Because when we fall in love with someone, they are reminding us of the divine spirit that we used to follow before we were born. And so the reason that we fall in love is because there's something about our lover that reflects divine reality. So that's one possible way. Another way is through astrology. And so some ancient astrologers tried to find ways for us to look at the birth chart and find a way to identify our planetary spirit or angel. Some people thought it was possible, some people thought it wasn't possible, but if you were an astrologer, you were sure going to try. So that's what we're going to look at, is one method of identifying a planetary angel in your chart, and then what do we do with it? Now, I know some of you are probably very new to astrology. I'm going to mention some concepts that you haven't heard of before. Uh, some of you are more experienced. Uh, I'm not going to go into every detail about this method, but if you study at Leonard's school, I'm sure he'll be happy to teach you how to do it. So let me go through this method. Uh, it's one method of finding the planetary angel. Uh, this is a method described by a man named Hermann of Corinthia. He lived in the 1100s AD. Uh, there were other methods. This, in a way, is his version of older methods. Now, what we're going to do is find out which planet in this person's chart has the most authority and is strongest and is best positioned to uh, indicate who this person really is and what will really make her happy. Now, remember I said, do we all have an individual angel or do we, many of us share in, a, in one single angel? I'm going to suggest that we probably do each have our own angel, but even if we do, it's probably a version of a general angel of this planetary type. So when we find the planet, it's kind of like um, it's kind of like learning a telephone number. Now you have a telephone number you can call, but um, then you have to ask further when someone picks up. Uh, to, to see who you need to talk to. There were methods for using the birth chart to find the name of your angel. And then you would use prayer, and meditation, and other methods to communicate, and, uh, uh, to communicate with this angel. We'll talk a little bit about that in a few minutes. So let's take a look at this chart over here. You probably can't see it very well, but I'm just going to discuss the general method. The first thing, because we're talking about life, life in this world, the first thing that people like Hermann did was they found the places in the chart that indicate life. 
Now, for those of you who know something about astrology, what would be an example of a place in the chart that indicates life? Probably the sun, the moon, uh, the ascendant. The ascendant especially indicates the body. And you see here up in this chart, I have a column for the sun, the moon, the ascendant. On the end is the lot of fortune, or the part of fortune. That is a place in the chart that is found using the sun, moon, and ascendant. So it's a combination of them. And then finally here, in this column, we have the new moon or full moon that happened just before you were born. So if you were born, let's say, three days after a new moon, you would find out where exactly that new moon happened in the chart, and you would note that position. So we find these positions.